five seconds remaining. Ah, oh, Jesus. All right. Radiant Team Ben. All right, where's Karen gone? Still waiting for her to reappear. I need to get some borders made for those. Definitely, uh, definitely something that needs to happen. Borders for my overlay, you know, like around the, the edges at the moment, they're a little bit raw. And I need to uh, get someone to make some. Make them a little bit jazzier. Now, um, I'm still Max, herding cats. Sorry, sorry, yes. Um, I had to move Max because apparently he was still in the kitchen making his pasta. Okay. <laughs> I, fair enough, I, I had pasta move, for lunch today, it was nice. Um, so, we're following a bit of the meta with the Beastmaster band, despite the fact that I don't think anyone here is a very keen Beastmaster player, but uh, Pudge, now that, that's more, it's more in-house. Yeah. Oh, look, look at Radiant. Radiant have five RCDC members and Dyer have three. So, we're doing pretty well. We've recruited a lot. Yeah, there's, there's only four other people who I sent an invite to who haven't responded, but... They okay, don't nice. really play Dota much anymore, like Owen and Dan. I'm sure if they play Dota again, then they'll join it. So, because we, we've all been trying to leave BVGS, the only thing we've still got BVGS at the moment is the website. So that's the only thing that needs to go. And then we're we're our own thing, uh, which is very cool. Venge being banned, it's quite interesting. Venge got nerfed in the last patch. I wonder why it's still being banned. Um, I'm not sure. Probably just a swap, I suppose. And Dave, it's probably deny pick against Dave because uh, Dave yeah, plays. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. Bay's very good at um, playing cores. I think he has been playing a lot of Venge recently. I think he's talked about it, so that does make sense. Scott... Well, actually, what? Sorry, Dave is probably going to play Dawnbreaker. It's in Captain's Ward now, oh, and true. he, he really absolutely likes loves it. Dawnbreaker. So now, I'm expecting that. I like Dawnbreaker. I've played it uh, quite a lot. Not with a great win rate. I've actually come to an opinion about Dawnbreaker. Terrible pos three. Great pos anything else. Maybe not one. But really? I really, really hate Dawnbreaker's pos three. After playing it quite a lot, because what happens is I win the lane, but Dawnbreaker cannot initiate. You're very good at counter engaging. Oh, they go on your team, you bolt in. Um, but how do you get on top of someone? The hammer is incredibly slow. Starbreaker takes three hits. You can't lock anyone down in the late game. You don't have Ravage. You don't have Hoof Stomp. Yes, you were right. You were 100% right. But I think Dawnbreaker great as a mid because then you can easily help another lane. Even okay as a support, very strong skill set and great at ulting in to save people. But if you need someone to start a fight, Dawnbreaker is terrible at it. Uh, and I don't think she scales amazingly well to the late game unless, again, you play with Ags and play like a support. So I want to see support Dawnbreaker or maybe mid. I think mid Dawnbreaker works really well because uh, you win the lane fairly hard. You can farm, you can gank, um, you have global presence. But yeah, I just don't like her in the pos 3 role, I'm afraid. But maybe Does, other people prove me wrong. Doesn't Dave play Dawnbreaker as a 3 though? Well, maybe I definitely do. But um, I found that no matter how hard I win the lane, I can't engage team fights. Not like you blink in with Tidehunter and you Ravage. You blink in with Centaur and you Hoof Stomp, right? How do you do it on Dawnbreaker? You can blink in and start doing a Star Breaker, but it just feels a bit underwhelming. That's what I found. If you want another Bruiser, yeah, she's pretty good. Anyway, it's first time in Captain's Mode, so first in-house game. Yeah. Oh, and they've gone for oh. strong independent <laughs> women lineup. Uh, going yeah, all Dawnbreaker and it. Legion. Uh, well, Legion Dawnbreaker would be quite scary. You've also got an interesting combo. Legion jewels someone, you just start ulting on top. If the jewel doesn't kill them, uh, well, then you're going to land and stun them again anyway. So definitely some synergy there. Jakiro got buffed and nerfed. He lost strength gain, but he gained int gain, which is nice for him because he's all about spamming his spells in the early game. Tiny bit squishier, but not, not really going to matter. Well, liquid fire doesn't goss any matter anyway. <laughs> True, but it has a very long so. cooldown uh, when you're laning. Uh, and it's it's a bit underwhelming when it's rank 1. But definitely max rank liquid fire adds up to damage. It's free damage, I guess. Free damage. Um, anyway, Legion Legion early makes sense because Legion does counter Chikiro in lane because you just uh, press the attack off the slow. Okay, so we've got a bit of a theme going on. We've got dragons versus... Well, like independent Val women. <laughs> independent women. I was going to say like Valkyries, because that's um, it's topical, and also you know strong women with with wings. She's got like a winged helmet going on there. Um, but anyway, I like it. Dragon Slayers. Yeah. And we don't know anything about 
Brindafield or Pandafield. Actually, the, his in-game name is different to what I put on the spreadsheet. So his in-game name is. Have you put Pandafield? That's fine. Yeah, That's but fine. it should be Brindafield. I'll, uh, I'll um, change that now. What camera is he? I think the uh, number seven. Um, I think the Winter Wyvern is probably going to be played by uh, somewhat. Um, Ten seconds oh, yeah, he's he did play that hero a lot back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's just one of his most played. If it's not troll, it's like top, at least second or first. Well, <sighs> Wyvern got nerfed quite a lot, but I still think Wyvern is good. Very good against Legion Commander. Someone's getting jeweled. Just Winter's Curse, or um, <laughs> just Cold Embrace, and the jewel will basically do no damage. So yeah, I'm true. Uh, yeah. It's very annoying. Yeah, the old yeah. chat is uh, popping off a bit. Oh, I've not seen the old chat. So um, Panda, what Ollie. do you play? Need to know for bats. <laughs> yeah, nice. My most played is Meepo. Ten seconds remaining. That is actually true. I think. It's and actually. It's, I think it might be. Five, I think that might be. The, there was definitely a guy who appeared out of nowhere and actually plays Meepo. Um, but I don't was know it not it's my him. friend? Was it not Decay? He plays Meepo. Decay plays Meepo. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah. that's true. Decay is awesome. I have not seen Decay play Meepo in an in house. We used to have the odd Meepo player. It was usually Ross or Royds. Yes. But, um, and they, they did a lot of good games as well. So we're banning Winter Wyvern. Not Winter Wyvern, sorry. Another frosty hero in my mind. Ancient Apparition, Skyrath Mage, and Nyx Assassin. So it's not core bands this time. It's actually a lot of support Aww. bands. More support bands. Ollie we've got and Enigma. Pugma, Enigma. Or maybe they're not supports, but they're not uh, pos ones, which is our usual meta. You're right, Ollie and Enigma is gone. I'm not sure. Um how good Enigma would have been. I suppose Enigma Jakira is pretty good. You can also black hole on top of a Winter's Curse. So yeah, there's, there's some synergy there. Though Dawnbreaker, I guess, could be ulting her team when black hole's going and then just land down and stun the Enigma. So there would have been some synergy there. Let's see what they do go for. A lot of reserve time's been used already, or at least over a minute. Something to go with Legion Commander. I'm thinking Snapfire. Oh, they just went for Lion. Lion. Pretty standard. Yeah. Finger of Death with Jewel means if you roam around in the early game, that's pretty much a kill. Um, why not? It's crowd control. You need some stun because you've only got Legion and Dawnbreaker. Not not really that reliable, that stun. So, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's either usually like Lion or Lena. Um, Five seconds remaining. Sorry. The loud noise outside. Um uh, or just some hero that has a lot of bursts, but my first thought would always be Lion, I think. Okay. For sure. Well, Skyrath got nerf, uh, got banned, which I think makes Radiant sense because TV. that's Legion's best friend. I think Snapfire comes in a close second. They've gone for Abaddon. So he had a few changes. I think he's fairly popular at the moment. He does have a hard dispel, strong dispel, which means you can get rid of Hex, Earth Spike, um, you can't, can't remove Jewel, of course, Ten but you can keep someone remaining. alive through Jewel by spamming heals and shields on them. So, Five yeah, I think definitely remaining. a good pick, Baden. I do like that one. I know he had a talent now to reduce the cooldown of his ultimate, which is quite good if you're going for the Axe build. But what will they run with it? That means Abaddon pos three. I like that. You just don't see it very often. That but could I do be Chikiro like Core, though. I... Have played Jakira Core and a very long time ago, Jakira Core was not a terrible thing if you wanted to win really fast because you buy loads of, you get your Yules really quickly, you can buy any other item you might need on him, and then you just yeah. destroy towers. But you don't see a lot of Jakira Core these days. Um, not yeah. bad mid laner, actually. Does quite well, well in mid. I think Nat the other day, he played uh, Jakira mid. But I think that's because we did single draft. <laughs> okay. So yeah, no choice. Jakira is so good against TA. Weaver is an is an interesting pick when you're playing into Lion and Legion Commander. If you get jeweled or if you get anything by Lion, mm. pretty, pretty much Ten dead. Yeah, so I think the Weaver player is going to have to be really careful. Though he does have a badon, which means you can just aphotic shield him and charge the Weaver in. And um, well, there yeah. you go. Weaver's fine. Though I think you'll probably be laning Weaver Jakiro. A Baden Winter Wyvern with a Baden Pos 3, and then we're running a, uh, a mid hero which has not yet been chosen. Yeah. Or Flame. Weaver could get in Lincoln's as well, I think. He'll have to, but I hope he doesn't go Bay's build from last time, which is literally first item Brown Boots Lincoln's. I know he needs <laughs> the Lincoln's, but I think Weaver should get uh, Treads Maelstrom first just to build up some damage, and Farming Rate, and then go for it. 
Um, Ten seconds morphling. Okay. They, I think Morphling, the Morphling pick Five makes sense to me because really. there's not a lot of lockdown. You've got Jakiro stun. Winter Wyvern does have a curse. Yes, that's true. Um, but that's it at the moment. You're relying yeah. on an ultimate and a skill shot. If you don't have that, Morphling is absolutely fine. He can just do what he wants. Weaver can't duel him. Uh, it was in one, 1v1 one him. Um, so yeah, I like the Morphling pick here. Yeah. They have no burst. You can't burst the Morphling with that team. Jakiro doesn't have burst. Winter Wyvern's not got a burst. No one's got a burst. He can just uh, shift out of anything, really. Ten seconds so they have to think of a mid hero who can really put the pain onto a Morphling. Five seconds remaining. Would it? It could. That, I mean, that morph could also be uh, carry though. Like, it can be carry or mid, I suppose. True, but I think it still means you're going to need a, a burst hero on the enemy team, just to kill him in the, even in the late game. Yeah. So yeah, you Ollie, can out of lane. Ali silencer. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know about silencer against a morphling. I guess if you Ten silence him, really. it's true, but he can't. You know, you can't really morph, but. It's the BKB. As soon as Morphling gets BKB, the Radiant team are completely useless. You need someone with immediate yeah. lockdown, and I don't Dyer know who they're thinking back. about. Mm. Immediate lockdown. Yeah, from a mid hero though, I'm thinking Void Spirit always comes to mind when I think of lockdown. Uh, just Wind because Ranger Wind Ranger. That's true. You've got the long shackle. You can then just focus oh, fire him. <laughs> uh, well, and, and Void Spirit. <laughs> Void Spirit and Wind uh. Ranger. Okay. So we literally thought of two heroes. They both went away, which means that um, <laughs> the Dire team, they know um. what they're doing. They're really thinking about it. Other heroes with good lockdown. I can't think of any amazing mid heroes. I don't think Dragon Light mid is going to work. You need more remaining. damage. Radiant team is a bit low on damage. So they need Five to up that. Remaining. You don't want anything that can just be dispelled by Legion Commander. You need something instant. Hmm. Conker? Ollie Conker? Yeah. You know, the problem with Conker is his setup means that Morphling can just start morphing strength. But or Ember? Ember doesn't really have lockdown, but I did think Ember because he does have high damage. Um, yeah, Shadow Fiend. I guess you can use Blart the Morphling, that he can probably start morphing, or you probably one-shot him, to be honest. If you use a Morphling who's morphed mostly Agi, you're going to one-shot him with your ultimate Requiem. I guess Dawnbreaker can start ulting, but it won't be quick enough. Dire you actually could run Shadow Fiend. I think it's funny. There, yeah, they did Hooray! go Kunker. Yeah, okay. I think Morphling doesn't care too much about Kunker, because the second he gets X-marked, he can just mash strength and go literally 100% strength. But... Uh, you know, we'll see. Kunker's a very tanky hero, can probably stand up to Morphling, maybe, in the early game. He's got big cleave in lane if it's Morphling pos uh, 2. But I'm not sure. It's still not, Five seconds not convinced where the Dawnbreaker's going. Might be a 4. I think I like Dawnbreaker mm, 4 the most. I'm so used to Dave playing, like, the carry, yeah. that seeing him as Dawnbreaker support is going to be a bit odd, but I suppose there is Ross and Rides on his team who do play core, so... Yeah, I think Rides is the oh, most likely to go pos 3 out of those, um, whereas Ross is more likely to be pos 1, and they do need one of them to go mid. So you do yes. have pos 1, 2, 3, maybe it is Dawnbreaker 3, but then I don't think Legion support. It used to be a thing for a very, very <laughs> short period of time, but I think that's kind of gone away now. So we'll see what the last pick is. Very last pick of the draft. Hmm. I think a mid here it would work. But Kunker is a pain. You could also just run Morphling mid and then pick another Pos 1. I'm not sure what Pos 1 you really need. One who can stand up to Weaver. I think you could actually get away with uh, Drow Ranger here on the Dire. And that gives Aji to Morphling. Yeah, I would do Drow Ranger. Ooh. They went for the oh. other ranged hero, a bit more irritating, but I'm not convinced it's better than Drab, but we will see. It is Sniper. Ha -ha. Okay. Remember to change this. There we go. That's Pos Who Sniper, I'm guessing? It's Ross Sniper and Roy's Morphling. Yep. Um, I'm guessing Morphling can turn into Sniper, right? With Aghanims and then have a million attack range. Which would be True. quite scary. I've never seen that, but it's some synergy. Uh, Sniper versus Kunker. Interesting matchup. Sniper's going to make Kunker have a very hard time, but Kunker does have the ability to one-shot Sniper fairly easily. He's going to have to tank up a little bit. Maybe get treads early and put them on strength, get a raindrop, whatever he can to not get one-shot by the combo. 
that. Otherwise, he is going to annoy the Kunkka quite a lot. You've got Nat on the Weaver. Deutsch is pretty cool. Um, a bad and set, and I like those wings on the Winter Wyvern as well. Yeah, I don't think I've seen Nat play Weaver much. Weird, ah, so. Somewhat hasn't played a ton of Winter Wyvern, but the games he does have amazing win rate, and here we go. Dawnbreaker, 10 5 Wee! 36. He hasn't bought any shards, the big shards yet. What relics they're called, actually. All right, well, there was a quick pause, but it gives everyone time to predict. Predictions are up. Decide who you think is going to win the game. Is it going to be the Morphling and Sniper? I mean, you have to bet on the Moor Brothers. It's very unpredictable when you bet on them, but they are definitely talented players. Sniper with a ward. I think he's going mid. Morphling with the Quelling Blade. I don't know if you need Quelling Blade on Morphling. I think you can just buy more stats and morph Agi instead. It's but anyway. Too based, my friend. What was with the tip? Oh, watch out, watch out, watch out! I don't know. That's a strange manner of conduct. Thanks to it is you. a very strange manner of conduct. <laughs> Our base played Dawnbreaker all. enough to get the silver <laughs> tier at least. Yeah. I think I'm not quite silver tier on Dawnbreaker. I think I'm still bronze. Definitely a good hero though. I like heroes with global abilities. But you really have to balance them carefully. I remember from League of Legends, that game had a lot of global alts, right? And they, it's the same as people said on the Dota um, Reddit, the global alts were not overpowered in, in pubs. They were fine, they were nice, but they were okay. But in the pro scene, they were beyond broken because you've got so much communication between the teams. Anything global is going to happen instantly when your team need it. So they had to nerf pretty much every global ability in the game. So I don't know how good Solar Garden is going to be in the hands of pro players. But we're about to find out, I suppose. But anyway, we'll see what we'll see what Bay can do with it for the time being. Thirty seconds to battle. There was a um, I played a pub with him last night. I I don't know if it was last night that he said it, but he said that Dawn um, if you're playing Dawnbreaker, um, as soon as you get like level two, you're like really really strong oh yeah the qw is so yeah. so good they buffed the w to do 120 damage plus 20 burn damage per second so it already hits hard then starbreaker hits very hard too with the three swipes base has gone straight into going in on that they've stunned him as well but he does have sakuchi so he is going to be fine ross has put down one trap or two trap he's gone on right click somewhat but not a lot of attack range on sniper in the early game or base damage so they are going to get away and doge he's gonna walk around and pick up a few <laughs> a few runes Why would they choose to go for Weaver? They unfortunately overlap their abilities a little bit. And Lion, level 1 Earth Spike is only a 1.4 second stun. Maybe with the 2.5 second Hex actually could have been better. But then they wouldn't have had the damage to kill him anyway. And yes, why go on Weaver? I'm not sure. But Weaver is absolutely fine. Oh, thanks for the resub. Six months. That's an interesting dialogue that they put down here. Um, Big like master. Right in the jungle. Well, you quite... see the courier, I think. It's very deep, and it, it reeks of Brax, mm. that ward. <laughs> yeah. I've not seen him in a while. He used to be in every in-house. I think he's busy. That's fair enough, but you know he was our resident courier sniper, so... Oh, Ross getting the range creep deny. Getting another deny. Almost getting three denies there. Ollie a bit unhappy about that, I'm imagining, but Ross still level one. Ollie here to mess up his own enemy's last hitting. It is annoying playing a melee against a ranged hero. I like the change they made. I don't even know how people played before it. Um, you know, where ranged heroes, uh, melee heroes instead. Oh, yeah, there's the courier kill. Brindafeld went for Ooh. exactly as... Uh, no, it wasn't even him who got the kill, though. I was looking at that wood. It was veteran who got base courier yeah. in the top lane. Do you remember when melee yeah. heroes had to buy a stout shield? Oh, he did get it. He did get it. Is he going to TP out in time? He's very, very low. One more right click. Yeah, he's okay. But Bay, he actually finds first blood in the top lane. Level one with the Starbreaker. And then mid lane, Ooh. Ross gets seemingly a dive on Ollie. I'm sorry I t tours. I missed both of those, but literally one after the other. And that level three, another courier. Brindafell gets a second courier already. Wow, these couriers, they're going down. Nat has been given a lot of solo XP that has allowed him to get to level three, which is very important because Weaver with levels really, really needs them. So good start for the die. First blood followed by a mid kill. 
Leroy's taking a bit of harassment in the top lane. It's Doidge on the uh, on the core, Baden. Yeah, it's Dave plus five. Plus five Dawnbreaker, interesting. He's going to show us whether Dawnbreaker really can be a support. I mean, it has the skill set for. Uh, I think the reason it has the skill set for a core is because Luminosity is a crit, so it scales when you get items. I know people have been going Daedalus on the hero as well. And uh, Starbreaker also does three auto attacks. So I think people think, well, that makes it a core. But the ultimate doesn't scale, and neither does the hammer. And those are two of the other really strong abilities. So, yes, Axe is so good on Dawnbreaker. Though a bit of a luxury for a pos 5. I think maybe you just go, like, Glimmer and stuff. So once you've ulted in, you can Glimmer people. But, yeah, the Axe is an amazing support tool. Absolutely incredible. Very nice of Veteran to secure that range creep. Brenda is just literally... Wandering through the jungle. Basically the whole time. <laughs> level one on somewhat. I mean, oh he's God. really giving he... everything for his brother, who's <laughs> over level four. Korea's coming. Oh um, no. He's... It's flying this time with 100 HP. I think that's the thing about Dawnbreaker, as you just see with Bay there. It's very easy to dodge the third Starbreaker without setup. Very, very easy. Brenda was looking for the Curry. He's actually trying for it. He is going to get it. He is going to go down, unfortunately. Is that worth it? I don't know. He did die there, but that is the third Courier kill from the same... Three Courier kills in four minutes. Brex would be proud. This must be a new record. They did manage to get a kill on Royds in the top lane. Not sure how they brought the Morphling down with Bay protecting him, but there you go. Bay has decided to go for luminosity because it is a crit it adds a little bit of damage it's only uh, a 120% crit so it barely crits but then it does also give you a 30% a heal that also heals your allies they've gone in with the slow going hard on roids but doidge he's got the heals so they're going hard on veteran yeah there we go there's a star breaker but the fairy fight is it gonna be enough yes it is but they are going to bring doidge down oh it's broken it's cancelled veteran turns around not sure he should go for that because Bay oh. will get the kill. Is he going to burn to death? No, he is not. Because he had a stick and he had a tango going as well. So double kill for the Dyer in the top lane. They might go for the stun on Nat, but Nat is in absolutely no danger. And this line is level 2. He is, in fact, just being charged that Tim gives him. Press the attack. But is it going to be enough? Nat is going really for him. Out comes the stun underneath the tower. He does actually still end up getting the kill. I think it was the bug that was eating away at him. It was enough. And look at Ross. He's playing a very typical core sniper. He goes straight for treads. And now he's going for Maelstrom. I think all he needs to do is remember to swap his treads to strength and also buy a raindrop. And then I think he'll be able to survive Kunker. Dawnbreaker or Bay IRL? Bay IRL is pretty damn tall. Royce is right clicking Veteran over and over and over. Yet Veteran doesn't really seem to care very much. Look at the damage going on to Royce, though. He does have the Morbid Mask now. Oh no, here we go. Bay just goes straight in. And there's yet another kill. Royce is just standing his ground. Doesn't seem to care too much. Oh yes, I have not put the player cams on yet. Let's put them in. So uh, oh. that's that's quite nice to have. <laughs> Since people have their cameras on. There you go. There's Tim's face. Sorry, we're only six minutes in. Level six on Weave at six minutes, though. That is actually incredible for a core. Level five on the morphing, though, so not doing too bad. Supports are very good these days at giving their core solo experience. I know that's not always that fun for the supports, but it's a little bit necessary. Somewhat is really waiting mid. Look at, look at his positioning. They want to get a kill on Ross, and Ross... He's very low on HP. I think they're going to go for it. If they can. No, Ross is really playing it safe. He doesn't want to get dived. He knows someone is here. Oh, Royds managed to get a killing spree. Another kill in the top lane. I'm really waiting for this Ross dive. Ollie yeah. is essentially baiting it. Ross is playing so safe, though. Really, really not coming close. Now what they're going to do. They're going to lead with the torrent. But they missed the torrent. Ross is absolutely fine. Uh, they even brought Veteran here as well. It just wasn't enough. They tried so hard, but Ross, he played really safe. He suspected a gank. And so he's absolutely fine. Now he has the Javelin. If Javelin procs and a headshot, that's really going to hurt. Is Weaver common these days? Well, he was buffed a little bit. Um, not sure how common he is, but yeah, he's definitely a good hero right now. Falcon's Blade.
That got buffed again. Now it's 12 damage and 200 HP. Not bad for Weaver. Tanks him up in the early game, gives him mana regen. I think Falcon's Blade, I mean, Weaver might be one of the only heroes where Falcon's Blade is actually good, I might say. Very few other heroes, but Pos 1 Weaver, I can see this being a really useful item, mostly just for the health. Because you get that on top of treads and you keep them on strength, you're pretty hard to burst. Ole, he's just trying to farm the jungle as hard as he can. But he's losing out to a sniper because Max Rent Shrapnel with three charges, it is very good for farming. Though Ollie has just found the greatest item ever. And then Royds immediately finds it as well. <laughs> so they both found the greatest jungling items possible. Makes sense that you find it while it's jungling, doesn't it? Oh, Ollie's going for the kill. He's going for the kill, but he doesn't realize Dawnbreaker is here. So he's actually in a lot of trouble. He does have the illusion rune. Not quite enough damage to kill Ross. They're trying. Ross is just going to stand his ground. But the fairy fire was used, and Veteran does get a pick up on Ross. I think I'm going to say worth. That's a support dying for a core. They nearly taking down somewhat not quite strong enough. I think the best thing Sniper can do is to stand his ground. I mean, if he was going to die there, might as well get as much damage off as possible. I know Take Aim has a new active, or, or not new, it was the last patch, but... They did change it quite a bit. It no longer gives true strike. It slows you more than it used to, but now it is a 100% chance to headshot. You headshot every single time, guaranteed now. And it costs less mana. Roy's taking a bit of damage, but he's going to back off. Got a rotation going on in the bot lane, but Nat, he is away. Does he have vision? No, he doesn't, but he's just being really safe. I think maybe he saw them in the ward here, saw them rotating. I think Ollie actually has the same sofa as me, I've just realised. It's very similar. <laughs> <laughs> Literally just thought that. Oh no, Royds, he's so low, is he going to die? Nah, he's got time to swap. That's the thing about these two dragons. They don't really do a lot, but his brother Ross has turned up. There's going to be a kill. Cold Embrace not coming off quick enough. We don't have the stun from Veteran either. Jungle is our bottom. Okay, his fight's happening all over the place. Bay's in a lot of trouble, gets cleaved to death by Ollie, and now Brinda failed. He is in a very, very bad situation. Now he's going to get the kill. Is he going to get a courier as well? He's trying. Yes, he does. That's a bit of revenge. revenge. Yeah. We have now hit 10 minutes, and it's very close. Only 1k gold between them. Already 14 kills. Bit of a bloodbath. Dyer have the lead, mostly thanks to Ross, but Royd's doing pretty good too. Out farming Nat at least, and Nat, he's 3 0 1. Not died at all, but the farm from Royd is just even better. Nat, though, amazingly has 20 denies. So he has really done a number on uh, Tim. Tim with 31 last hits only, just about got phase boots. Not the greatest start for him. Ah, 15 damage on the sniper. That is the greed build. I would have gone take aim duration to go back to 4 seconds, but. Not when you're Roids. Oh, Three Ross. people. Oh, no, Roids. The Roids absolutely fun. They actually get the stun on Doid. But out comes the Cold Embrace. Big damage onto Vetrum. I don't think it's enough. Bay's a tanky hero, but Ollie's still going to go in with the combo. Out comes the headshot. Not well, the headshot. The sharpshoot is not quite enough damage. And Ollie will get a pick up there. We've got a duel going out. Is it enough to kill somewhat? Very close. Nope. There's the Apotic Shield. But Doid, very low on HP. We've got a massive fight going on here somewhat. He's going to take him down by Ross. And Doidge is now on the run. He is a fast hero, but Nat also in the bot lane gets a solar kill on Brinda failed. And here comes the ult. There we go. Ross picking up yet another kill. A lot of kills in that fight. Ross turned up a little bit late, but still was able to get a double kill. And Ollie, he might have killed Bay, but then he had to back off pretty quick. And Nat getting a solar kill, of course, that helps. But the Radiant are still a little bit behind. Three kills behind, 2k gold. It's the sniper you've got to be worried about. He is farming so incredibly well. He's got that maelstrom. And of course the pig pole, the greatest item ever. By the gods, tower doesn't even have arms to defend itself. What a brave tower. Ollie sees Tim mid. Tim is just pushing the tower, doesn't seem to care. Veteran is here though. They do have glyph. They use it. Ollie's here in this rune. Turns up, I gets the bow, waits for the clip. Ah, oh, veteran, oh. he was really patient. And there's going to be enough damage to kill Timidor, is it? 
Is it enough damage? They're really trying. Yeah, Tim is going to go down, but Veteran, even though Jakira got nerfed, still has quite a lot of strength. Alchemist of Winter's Curse, but the Finger of Death will get the kill. Holding Bay in place, but I'm not sure it's really enough. Nat will get a kill on Brenda Fail does have the time lapse. And Bay, he's just running away. But being chased by Nat under the tower? Yeah, we are going to go under the tower. Starbreak is not going to be enough, and Ross realizes he needs to cut his losses and run away. Great fight for the Radiant. Sniper now building Satanic. Literally Maelstrom Satanic. I'm not sure if he really needs Satanic this game. He doesn't need to rush it anyway. Yeah, he's decided to go for it anyway. Going for a duel on Deutsch. Perfect timing. Out comes the torrent, but it's still going to be a kill because he's under the tower. Really nice play from Tim there. I like the rush Satanic build on Sniper. I think it makes sense, but this game I don't feel like he needs it. They don't really get to him, to be honest. But anyway. Using like high the, five. Uh, the lion with the two fluffy hats. Oh yeah. Poor lion. He just needs to grab a few items. Keeps getting killed by Weaver. He's very low level. And he's about to be obliterated by Ollie. <laughs> Goodbye. And Ollie, he gets two cleaves. No, he doesn't cleave it. I'm not sure if it would have been enough damage anyway. The fluffy hat's actually keeping him alive. Or very close to keeping him alive. If Ollie got one more cleave off, it actually would have been enough to save him. Ah, oh, Roy's getting some instant denies. What's happening in the bot lane? A couple of heroes waiting. But Tim, he just immediately runs away. Is Bay in any trouble? Yes, because he's used his hammer. And he is going to go straight down. Now Tim, X marks the spot. Five Radiant Heroes bot. So yes, you're definitely going to go down. Brenda failed. You got a bit of save your friend syndrome. He needs to run away. Does he escape though? Nat is going really, really far for him, but won't dive the tower. Nat just picking up the Maelstrom. Unfortunately, that's a fair bit behind the Sniper, who is really high on the net worth at the moment. 8,300 gold. About 2k ahead of the next person. Great last hitting from Roids too. These heroes are having a really good farming time. And, hey, lowest level in the game. Doesn't really matter because he just needs his ult. And then the Starbreaker swing to scare the enemy team. And then we got Brenda failed on cam as well. It's a very mighty beard. Tim, Tim would be jealous. <laughs> I, was just, I was just thinking that. I could have a competition. Yeah. Tim, you need to, you need to try harder. <laughs> Maybe we need to have a, a, a Movember stream right at the end. And I'll do it as well. Everyone just go full Movember. Well, unfortunately, I cannot partake. Nah, not so um, easy for you. I'll judge it. I'll be a judge. You judge. You judge yes. Movember then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Under <laughs> I feel sad for them. I've never done Movember. Maybe one day. Maybe maybe this year is the year. They allow teachers to do it, so. How does one grow a beard? I don't know. Genetics, eh? Oh, oh Tim. Four man gank on Tim. This poor guy is going straight down. Does he even bother pressing the attack on himself? He does, but he gets immediately brought back. And off he goes. That's a lot of damage. How is he still alive? They actually have to drop the macro. He's still not dead. And out comes the stun from Dawnbreaker. Finger of Death goes into Shakira. Yes, they finally bring down Tim. But what a lot of work he did first. Now, Bay taking a massive amount of damage from Ollie. Does get away with the hammer. It also applies a slow aura. A <laughs> photic shield nearly blows up. But Bay is actually okay. Dyer really bringing in the cavalry here in Radiant. They take three losses and Ollie very, very, very close to dying. Gets out Ooh. with the Shadow Blade. Nat does try to push the tower on the top lane in the meantime. But wow. Tim really surviving well there. Yeah. Four heroes on him. And he managed to nearly get away and did a huge overwhelming odds. It wasn't even max rank. But he has only got 10 dual damage. He's looking to pick up a little bit more, I hope. And how's Ross doing? Just farming the jungle. He's actually got the um, the Reaver now. He literally just needs to buy the Morbid Mask. And he has a full Satanic. Can you imagine 16 minutes trying to kill someone with Satanic? You've got no anti-healing. No one's got Shivas. No one's got Skadi. Maybe Skadi Weaver's coming out next. I'm, I probably would instead of Sanj and Yasha. Roy, is just morphing strength. Can you kill us more if he's just gone full strength? I'm not sure you can. Brinda failed is maybe an easy kill. They dropped the boat on Roy. He does manage to get out with the waveform. You just can't kill a hero with this much strength. He's gone 100% strength. They are going to take his tower, so that's definitely something. Yeah, Brinda gets away. Using that Tumblr's toy. Best item ever. Oh. Oh. 
they're not going to kill this Morphling. And look at Ross farming an ancient stack. He just doesn't care. He's like, yeah, triple stack. Thank you. Time of his life. Just got a Maelstrom and a Satanic. It just got three neutral items as well immediately. One after the other after the other. Decides to go for a killer. Why wouldn't you? Nine Agi and seven damage and mana regenerator and three strength. I mean, it's just an amazing item. He is now going for the Dragon Lance to increase his range a little bit. He did go for the attack speed talent at level 15 as well, so he is going for just a pure right-click man mode sniper. And when he's this far ahead, it might be quite scary. I don't know how they kill him. Uh, Heaven's Halberd is needed, along with um, along with a Skadi, perhaps, if you want to reduce his healing. Maybe a Shiva's too. Shiva's not a bad pickup on Deutsch, if you can farm it. What happened to my webcams? Why have they gone? Huh? VDOS? Yeah, that's interesting. Like, literally, the camera's just kind of stopped. Anyway, back to Tim. We've got Ross this time, but he does have Satanic. Out comes Bay. Bay's here with the stun. Now Ross just pops Satanic and hold it in place. But this is a perfect time to use the Winter's Curse. The entire Satanic is gone. He nearly kills Bay. Bay almost dies to Magpie, but he gets healed by Tim, and there's no kill on the sniper. He's going for an ultimate. I don't know who that's on. Just a bit on Deutsch. Ollie turns up again, but I just don't think they have the damage to kill the sniper. Look how much he's healing. And he always has a Dawnbreaker to protect him. I mean, how do you how do you kill him? You've got Dawnbreaker to ult him. And then you've got Satanic. And you've also got Tim to heal him and dispel him as well. It's just so hard to kill the sniper. They've almost got like a... I wouldn't say four protect one because Morph is actually a core, but more he's more of a distraction than anything. He's going for his own Skadi on the Morphling. I guess that's a bit of a counter to Winter Wyvern and to Abaddon. I'm a bit confused about Holy Locket on Wyvern while also having Arcane Boots. Do you need that much mana on Winter Hello. Wyvern? Okay, no. So... <laughs> What I've learned about Luke is he is a mana boot addict. He said that he would make mana boots, he would disassemble it, or and then and then instead of like making it into tranquils or whatever, he will literally rebuy mana boots. Like he, I think he said he was like a mana whore. He yeah, okay. I mean, <laughs> so, okay, so yeah. That it's been, it's been buffed a lot though, right? So it's now 175 mana. It also gives it to your team. People always go, oh, can you anyone arcane me? So yeah, not bad. Roche is going down very quick. Double damage. He's got 400 attack damage. Wow, that's Morphling with the base stats. Absolutely deleting Roche. Uh -oh, Out comes the Swarm. The They're trying, but Bay is just trying to hold them off. <laughs> Nat decides to go in. Out comes the ult from Bay, but the Winter's Curse is a lot of damage. Somewhat is going to get the kill on Brinda Fail. There's a lot of damage. This is a massive macrofire from Veteran. Fantastic play. Bay's going to melt. Royds, he's now in a lot of trouble. He turns into Chikiro. Does get some slows off. Ollie is trying to duel Ross, but realizes he cannot fight the Satanic, and Ross will get a kill. Winter's Curse goes off. They're not going to be a kill for Tim. But Ross, this is sitting in the back, just killing everyone. This is the reason why the fight didn't go so well. I mean, he killed Ollie, and then he just turned around and just deleted Deutsch and somewhat. I mean, they thought it was a free win, the Radiant. This was like a great engage, everything going well. And then they just couldn't kill Ross, and Ross is now just about to take Roche. Nat is going to turn up, but Ross doesn't care. He's going to sit there and right-click. And there we go. There's another kill for Ross. They cannot kill the Sniper. They cannot kill the Sniper. There you go. There's Roche. And yet another kill. Ross now has 15,000 net worth. He is so far ahead. Not only is he miles ahead yeah. on farm, he has 10 kills and one death. The Weaver does have 7 kills and one death. He's also level 20, thanks to that fight. And he's got the Aegis. He's got the 28 distance on the knockback. So it knocks back quite a lot further now. And I'm assuming he'll go for the attack range talent at level 25. It's just a typical sniper, in it? He's always just standing at the back. Yeah, but... Right oh, Tim. He gets hit square in the face by the boat and goes down. The thing is, even though when they go on him, like Ollie managed to get to Sniper, and he said, I don't care. I've got um, I've got Satanic. What are you going to do? You're going to kill me? 
I don't think so. And now he's going for Daedalus. He realizes that no one can kill him. Why not get more damage? More damage means more lifesteal. Oh, God. So it makes sense. I mean, this sniper is so hard to kill. Look at Dyer. They're very aggressive. They get the Hex. They're going on Ollie. But they don't have detection. They do, but Bade drops it a little bit too late, I'm afraid. The Royce does just get two courier pickoffs, <laughs> which is very nice. So I think that's worth it. Two courier pickoffs. That's uh, 175 gold. Not sure what items it denies, but it does stop them using their couriers for over two minutes. I think they were close to base-ish anyway, unless they were going to the secret shop, then they're a bit of... Oh, here we go. Bay's going straight in. But beautiful stun by Veteran. That was amazingly well placed. Dawnbreaker going for Solar Crest. It makes a lot of sense because, I mean, if you look at the hero, she's basically the embodiment of Solar, isn't it? She's prob <laughs> basic, probably wearing a Solar Crest on her, on her chest. But um, Dawnbreaker with Solar Crest makes sense because she's got physical damage from the Starbreaker, but also when you ult in, then you can immediately Solar Crest your ally like Sniper, giving him even more armor. Uh, and attack speed, of course. You've also got to stop this Morphling. It's actually Morphling with the Agon. Tim's going straight in. Can they get the kill on Veteran? Finger of Death. Finger of Death on Doidge instead of Veteran. Bit of a mistake there, but they're both still going to go down. Now comes the ult from Dawnbreak. It does get the start in the bad, and he doesn't have borrowed time. He's just used it. He is going to go down. Bay is going to be the cannon fodder, but I think he's more than served his purpose there. Three kills for them. It's really not looking good for Radiant now. We're 24 minutes in. We cannot stop this Sniper. They didn't uh, get enough dive heroes. That's the problem. They can't get on top of Sniper. And when they do, it's just too late. Well, it was last pick as well, so... It was, but... I did feel like they needed more lockdown and um, initiation. I couldn't get, unfortunately, not quite enough. Bit of damage going here, but Roy does have the Aegis. Ross is just oh killing people God. off my screen. I mean, that's Ooh. how much attack range. This hero has over a thousand attack range. <gasps> Luke almost yeah. died. Oh, no. He's fine. No, he's not. Roy stands up. You can't kill Ross. There's the Satanic. Full HP. Absolutely no problem. Does Take Aim give you more attack range? No, it doesn't. Oh, it extends here to Aegis passive 400. Radiant's top barracks have fallen. They're bringing Ross back again. He's got his feds on strength. Immediately dispelled from the torrent knockup. Beautiful stun from, from Panda. And that, he's taking a lot of damage. Here's the back off. They cannot kill this sniper. Fantastic ults from Veteran as always, but it's a level 10 Jakiro. They bring him back into it, but again, heals from Tim. You know what the heals do as well? They give attack speed, a lot of attack speed as well. In fact, they've got a team that can just buff this sniper. How much attack speed do you get from Press the Attack? 140. Plus, you've got a Solar Crest from Bay. Fortunately, Bay can't turn up. Maybe Ross will actually go down. They're trying really hard. They're going to go on him. It's still not damage. They ult him as well. Yes, finally, Roids will kill his brother. But now they've got the ultimate. Ultimate onto Nap. Nice save from somewhat, though. Cold Embrace. But Bay is here to follow up on that. And that's okay. This is actually good for the Radiant. They finally got the 10 times kill streak. They're going to keep going. And Nat, can they bring down Roids? He still has the Aegis. And he's a very, very strong hero. Maybe you can get some other kills instead. Maybe get that lion. They're going to try for him. They get the stun. Oh, nah, he's in a lot of trouble now. I think he bit off more than he could chew, and he is going to go down Roids. He gets the BKB effect from Tim, the magic immunity. And there is actually going to be a buyback from Nat. This is a full committal to this team fight while they don't have Ross. There's one kill, but Roids gets yet another kill. Tim is going to go down. I think he's being chased at the moment. Can Nat find him? I can't keep everything oh, in the screen at the same time. Roids is going to get another kill. To Tim, he does manage to escape. He goes back in. He tries to get a jewel, or I don't know what he's doing. Actually, he's just running around. Oh, he goes in with a massive crit. We'll take him out. And Bay actually Aegis goes gone. down as well. Aegis has gone down. That's true. Can they bring down Roids? What a fight this is. Someone is going to be brought down. Roids getting yet another kill. He's just going to TP out. The audacity of this man he because X marks the spot. Oh, no. And finally, about five minutes later, the fight is going to end. That is a full team wipe, though Radiant did have to throw a buyback on the Weaver. It actually shows 11 deaths, I think, or 10 deaths. The fight was so long. <laughs> Bloody hell. I mean, yeah, Nat almost got Tim when they went up the uh, the high ground of the triangle, but he uphill missed. Oh, dear. So it delayed the death, but that was a very long fight.
very, very long fight there. And you can see that Radiant did actually benefit more from it, but not by a lot. I mean, the net worth is still 14,000 in Dyer's favor. The Sniper, he's still far ahead of anyone else. The main thing, which I think is quite interesting, is that Weaver has massively caught up in levels. He's only one level behind the Sniper now, and he has nearly got the Scardi, which is going to be essential for taking down uh, Sniper. I think Scardi is a very strong item when it comes to anti-healing, one of the strongest. I think it's, uh, is it 40% or 35%? It is 40%, uh, so very, very good at negating that heal. Also reduces the healing that Bay is going to do. He is going for Holy Locket, so Skadi definitely the right choice. I would have liked to have seen a Shivas, but I think Heaven's Halberd on a bad one does also make sense. Turnaround. Not entirely sure. I think this game is still quite heavily in Dyer's favor, but we are going to see what the Radiant can do. It did take them a lot to kill Ross, and now Ross has armed himself with a Hurricane Pike. So that's more HP and the ability to push a target away very, very far. I didn't realize that Hurricane Pike, you know when you activate it, it gives you 100 attack speed when hitting that target. I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. Look, for six seconds, you can make five attacks with 100 attack speed. Extra. Pretty good. He did go for Paladin Sword, so 20 damage, but 6% lifesteal as well. 16% lifesteal, and it makes him take 14% more lifestealing and healing. They see Ross. Are they going to full commit to him? Oh, that is a tactical oh. pause. <laughs> wow, okay. Ross is going, I'm AFK, I'm AFK. <laughs> He's AFK the second he gets X marks a spot. Well, I hope they plan the team fight. Dyer do not have two heroes there. Bay does have his ultimate, so he's going to immediately ult in. But Royce has to turn up still. However, are they close enough to get the kill on the sniper? They've got stun from line. They've got Timmy might duel someone. Got oh, press the attack. No BKB on the sniper. The four star is unfortunately a waste. He gets brought back. Do they have the damage? They no, they do four star and then they immediately give him the, the magic immunity. They're going to try the going hard on him, but here comes the ultimate. Ross still has the satanic, pops the satanic. Deutsch does have his ult. He is going to be okay. The duel comes out, but then Tim goes down. Tim just actually feeds Kit Gold to Nat. Nice ultimate, but you've already lost the Weaver. Wow, three heroes going down straight away. Ross just way too strong, and Ollie realizes, well, I'm a bit stuck now. They might have fed Weaver 30 duel damage, but it's a little bit too late, I think. They can't kill the sniper, they just don't have the damage to kill him. Soon he's going to have that attack range talent. Oh, I would probably go for six shrapnel charges, to be honest. I think it's way better, but we'll see. Yeah, that's another set of rags. Not a lot the Radiant can do. Ollie might have the Silver Edge. He is going for his own Heaven's Halber, but it's a little bit too late. And they are going for the final towers. You've got to take down a Morphling as well. You know, Morphling has his own satanic. I'm amazed that Dyer have managed to get so fed on so many heroes. Somewhat taking a lot of damage. He's being altered by the sniper. Not quite brought down. Very, very close. Massive heal coming out from Doid. Nice double stun from Brinda though. And Bay is going in. But Ollie will get a mad crit. Ross, he actually gets stunned. But is he in trouble? I'm not sure. I think Ross is just going to win the game. He's got an agenda, this guy, and it is winning. The Battle of the Brothers, the Rossroids are victorious. Yeah, I can't, I can't see anyone taking down Roids. They've got, they're too tanky. They built these Satanics really early, and there's a Galatmir on the sniper. <laughs> also, Tim. He, Tim has 10 dual damage this game. He actually fed more dual damage than he even got. Did it matter? No, he was essentially just a press the attack machine in the end. Oh my god, that's actually funny. I yeah. Oh, nice ultimate, but is it enough to kill Ross? They're going to try. He's very, very low. He gets torrented. No, he just pops the Titanic. They actually failed the attack from Kunkka. And there is the game. I don't know what's happening with my uh, camera script. Going to have to sort that out. But yes, there is the GG. And Bay's bitches. They are victorious. Ah, I know why my camera script's ruined. Fixed it. Okay.
I mean, it was just a sniper, way too strong. How do you take yeah. this guy down? I mean, he free farmed in the mid lane. He just got the satanic second item, and it actually turned out to be the right item because no matter what the radiant threw at him, they could not kill him. So maybe I'm thinking I would have seen seen a Shiva's rush from Doys rather than going uh, Vlad's and Sanj. I would have just made Shiva's, and then maybe earlier Scardi, and you would have been able to at least counter his healing. Heaven's Halberds also would have worked because you can Heaven's Halberd him while he's in Satanic. And that's five seconds where he can't do anything. But then Ross easily could have gone BKB. He chose not to. He's playing even on hard mode. If he had BKB, I think it was an even easier game for him. But anyway, a random Tim Cam just appears out of nowhere as I rerun the script <laughs> by accident. Nice. Nah, 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 nah. You just wanted to see Tim. That's true. I can't.